Well, was not expecting that performance. Uh, huge, huge home win for the Warriors following just a ridiculous game against the Celtics. Not even going to talk about that. I didn't want to record. It would have lasted like three minutes, you know, just as much as the starters played pretty much. Um, Warriors followed up a 50-point loss with a 35-point win against the hottest team in basketball right now, the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, since the All-Star break, number one defense in the league, haven't lost a game. Coming into this red hot, uh, the Warriors, this was a big, uh, another big game, you know. They've been playing great on the road for the most part, but they needed to come home and, you know, again, follow up a really, really bad performance. You get a couple days off. Andrew Wiggins is back in the lineup. And uh, go out there and get a win. You know, the Bucks. no Middleton tonight, so... A uh, little bit, little bit easier to deal with, but still, that's a problem of a team. Giannis is difficult. Space the floor with guys like Brooke Lopez. You got Bobby Portis, who's playing great basketball. Obviously, Damian Lillard's been on a tear. It's a tough team to face. However, the defense, even though they've played great uh, since the All Star break, for the most part, the defense is just not the same as it was in prior seasons. Obviously, losing Drew is a huge deal. So, you know that uh, that is what it is, but. The Warriors really, really came out of the gate aggressive offensively, uh, and they were very energetic and active defensively as well. They were making Damian Lillard just not touch the ball. They held Damian Lillard uh, pretty well in the first half. I thought they did a great job. Giannis was playing pretty well, but uh, I thought their game plan was pretty solid for the most part. You know, they they tried exactly what they tried with Jalen Brown. They were like, okay, if Giannis wants to take any jump shots, let him take jump shots. We're going to try and get him uh, get him thinking about not driving, essentially, having him settle for jump shots. And uh, he made a few of them, you know, credit to him. You make a few of them, you make a few of them. But uh, I thought they played pretty well against him, about as good as possible. And we're going to get into the one who clamped Giannis in, uh, in his time against them. But uh, I think the Warriors were pretty solid defensively. Midway through the third quarter, how, or the first half of the third quarter, Milwaukee really kind of took off. Uh, the Warriors had themselves quite the lead. Uh, at one point, I think 22 points was the highest. And then Milwaukee, red hot, uh, starting the third quarter off. Uh, and then they played great defense. The Warriors didn't have anything going. Uh, both units came in, couldn't really find much, but the Warriors kind of limped out into the fourth quarter uh, with a 12-point lead and ended up holding the Bucks to nine points in the fourth quarter, simultaneously scoring 32 points of their own again getting the win here 125 to 90 victory for the warriors huge game few uh few guys to talk about let's start off with the player of the game in my opinion and easily his best game of his career i mean unbelievable most impactful player on the floor by far came in and immediately changed things never got off the floor after it pretty much uh, and that's trace jackson davis trace jackson davis was absolutely unbelievable in his 18 and a half minutes of play on record in this game, uh, four blocks total. Three of them came against Giannis and the Kumpo. Two were back to back. And then another one was the next possession or I think two possessions down. And then he also got Giannis in a stop, which forced Giannis to dribble off of his foot and turn it over. Trace was incredible defensively altering a ton of shots at the rim Pat Beverly was trying to get a couple floaters going. Those didn't go. Dame tried to get a couple over. Those didn't go. Trace getting switched out onto Bobby Portis, I think, got a stop once or twice. He was just unbelievable uh, in this game defensively. Absolutely huge and completely changed things because, again, the Bucks took off midway through that third quarter and really started to take hold of the game. I think at one point they brought the lead back to nine points, so... Um, Things started, it felt, it started to feel like games prior, you know, the Warriors have not been good about taking care of leads this season. So it kind of felt like something familiar there, but Trace came in and shut it down, completely shut it down. Uh, finally, Dario Saric did not see the floor until the final minutes of the game. Kevon Looney only played six minutes of this game, and that was in the first quarter because Draymond Green picked up two early fouls before the halfway point. So Kevon had to come in and kind of, you know, play time management. But for the most part, aside from Draymond, the only center on the roster that got minutes 
was Trace, and that was incredible to see. On top of that, he was huge offensively and on the glass. Again, only 18 and a half minutes. Trace had 15 points, six rebounds, two of which were offensive. He was seven of eight from the field and made a free throw. Also had a steal. I mean, Trace was just insane. Trace was just insane. Um, great performance off of the bench. Again, right now for him, I think the the plus is no one's really scouting for Trace. No one's really paying attention to uh, to anything Trace is going to do for the most part because he doesn't get consistent minutes. So he's not a big time staple on the on the score sheet for anyone. However, you put up games like this where you you block Giannis three times. You're plus twenty in eighteen minutes. Teams are gonna be like, oh, I guess we gotta <laughs> guess we gotta watch out for thirty two on the bench. Uh, he was unbelievable. Best game of his career. Trace was absolutely amazing. And uh, you know, I like I've said many times. I still don't think Trace is a world beater. I don't think he's you know, like you play Trace thirty five minutes and automatically this team is going to the no. I don't think that's the case. However. As I've said multiple times as well, Dario Saric and Kevon Looney should not be getting minutes over him. You can make a little bit of a case for Dario, but I prefer Dario at the four. Dario at the five makes sense rarely, especially because the Warriors want to play fast, 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 and Dario is kind of a slow player. Um, so there just aren't many scenarios where I think Dario fits at the five anymore because the Warriors have picked up the pace here. But Trace was just amazing. And I think he should be playing a whole lot more. 18 minutes still feels a little uh, a little light for me. I'd like to see him hit 20 minutes consistently. He deserves it. Um, but yeah, shout out to Trace. Incredible game from him. Hopefully we get to see that continue going forward. Again, the two big time games he's played in for big minutes, this one and then that Boston game a couple months ago, he was unbelievable. You know, he was unbelievable in that game against the Celtics in San Francisco uh, and he was in, unbelievable in this game against the Bucks. You know, two red hot teams came in and played incredibly meaningful minutes and did the job, you know, did the job and some. So um, he's proven that he can do it when the games matter. And I hope that he gets to continue to see the floor more because there's really no reason why he shouldn't, again, at least over Kavan or uh, Dario Saric. Next up, Moses Moody. Uh, the last four or five games. I don't know what's gotten into Moses who put Michael Jordan's special water in that man's bottle, but he has been un unbelievable defensively. Like first half of the season, first and first half and a half of the season, just mediocre. You know, Moses, eh, I still feel kind of the same way about him offensively. It's like for some reason, and he did it again tonight. I, I literally said the last time I talked about him, for some reason, when the shot clock's about to go down, the most terrible off balance, what the hell is that shot possible? Those are the ones that Moses hits. He did it again tonight. But um, overall, offensively, I'm still not really wowed. He doesn't, there, there isn't this like, I'm going to go get a bucket mentality that I see, which um, there's a fine line between a Jordan pool and then, a, a, you know, just a smart player that's like, okay. I could take this matchup and I'm going to go try and find my offense. And if I don't, then I'll make a play, right? Moses is kind of like catch the ball immediately. Who wants it? There's not much aggressiveness unless it's like, okay, nobody's looking for the ball. Now I'm just going to run. Not much dribbling going on. Doesn't really have many size ups. He's not, uh, he's not a space creator for himself. So uh, there's a lot of like hesitancy for me to be too pro Moses Moody offensively, but the big thing is with that seven foot wingspan, how is he going to hold up on the defensive end? And early on in his career, including, uh, again, first half and a half of the season, uh, hasn't really been too great. He's been meh, not the worst guy out there. He plays with energy, but he hasn't been that great. You know, hasn't been, uh, hasn't been something much, hasn't been something much to watch. And he's not Jonathan Kaminga who might play in consistent defense, but is also going to give you, you know, 15 to 20 points a night get on the glass a bit, make some play. Like he's not giving you that kind of production. So if Moses isn't playing good defense, he's just not going to see the floor. And tonight Moses was insane defensively, even took the cookies from Damian Lillard straight up, just like Dante DiVincenzo did last season. 
Like Moses, Trace, Jonathan, they all played really, really good defense tonight as a as a unit. And I thought Moses was unbelievable on that front. He was a plus 22 on the floor. Highest of any player on the floor whatsoever. Plus 22. Uh, he only finished the game with six points. He was three of seven from the field. After he took the cookies from Dame, he went and dunked the ball. So there's two of them. Did miss a couple uh, tough shots that he ended up having to take. But um, again, his offense hasn't come around. I don't think he has much confidence on that end yet. And I understand, you know, it's difficult. Moses was never really uh, like, even though at Arkansas, he was technically the guy. Moses has never really been that guy in terms of scoring. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see over time if he can really develop that kind of um, mentality to go get himself a shot. Um, but still, if he's playing defense like he is now, you give me six points, play with the energy that you play with all the time. He also blocked a shot at the end in garbage time too, which was great. Um, I'm totally fine with it. Again, six points, four boards, an assist to steal a block, plus 22 highest of any player on the floor. He was incredible. 20 and a half minutes. He's going to keep seeing the floor, man. Playing defense like that, he will continue to see the floor, so... Really happy with the way Moses has progressed. Again, the offense doesn't even matter too much to me. You know, we went in the last season like, man, Moses is such a good shooter. Maybe he could play some solid defense. This right now, it's like, I don't even care what you do for me offensively. You're elite defensively right now. Or uh, yeah, you're elite defensively right now. So very happy there. Speaking of Kaminga, though, he's next up. He had another big game. What I've noticed a lot too with Jonathan is he typically kind of starts off red hot and I wouldn't even say starts off hot as in like, man, he's cooking like DeMar DeRozan, you know, 10 early points. He's cooking. It's not the same. It's more like Jonathan Kaminga catches teams off guard early on because he's really fast and athletic. Teams are trying to like settle down into the game and Jonathan's like immediately go. And so it's easy for him to get a lot of backdoor dunks and up the middle defensive breakdown first few minutes of the game. Jonathan had a quick, I think, nine points. He also made a three, took a couple of them. Uh, no, he made two threes, took four of them. Really, uh, really aggressive offensively tonight. Had a couple of uh, fun little turnovers, but I think overall Jonathan was really aggressive. Had a good first half. Kind of slowed down in the second half, though. Uh, again, he seems to be more of a of a first half kind of guy at the moment because he just doesn't really have too much um, counter moves. Uh, he doesn't have a bag right now. He's pretty limited. Uh, he can occasionally get to that mid range shot. He tried taking one off the glass, which was kind of funny. Uh, he got double teamed. He did have Moses on the wing, but he decided to fade away, uh, spin, fade away, and try and uh, bank one off the glass. But that didn't go. Wasn't really expecting it to, to be honest. But um, I think, it, it, honestly, when it comes to his mid-range shot, I think he needs a little bit of work on the form, personally. He, he very much does the Clay Thompson, like, hand completely straight up, like, essentially one-hand shot, um, which is okay. But I, I kind of want, I, I would like to see him have a different form. You know, who am I to judge, right, for that? But still... It feels like any time he shoots the ball, it's just flat. There's not the most arc on it. And because he's trying to get downhill, these set shot threes, they don't feel very rhythmic like they should. It doesn't have to be some like violent Jalen Brown jumper, but like, you know, I like to see a little bit of a of an improvement there form wise. Overall though, 20 points. Four boards, two assists, two steals, three blocks for Jonathan. He was a plus 12. Another great game, 9 of 14 from the field. You know, Wiggins only played 13 and a half minutes again. He had the family issue, was able to come back. It's not completely resolved, it was said. So there is a possibility that Andrew might not be able to be here much longer um, before having to go back to attend to whatever needs to be attended to. So, And he played great defense in his time. I think Andrew Wiggins was pretty solid. Uh, on that front, also made himself a three, uh, made a couple nice plays, got on the glass a little bit, but didn't play too much. So Jonathan got a lot of the brunt, uh, grunt work there, as well as Moses Moody. And I thought the both of them played great defense, but 
Jonathan especially, you know, this was going to be a tough night. You got to deal with Brooke Lopez. You got to deal with Bobby Portis. You got to deal with Giannis. A lot of big players for Jonathan to handle, uh, as well as trying to get on the wing on switches and stuff and deal with, you know, explosive guards like Pat Connaughton, obviously Damian Lillard. Malik Beasley's got a bit of uh, acceleration on him. So tough matchup for, for Jonathan, but I thought he handled himself very well. And I'm happy with his performance. You know, I've been very critical of his defense. We've talked about it many times, so I don't want to go back into it again. But consistency from Jonathan on the defensive end in the long run is going to be so key, um, especially help defense. We talk about with Draymond. Draymond's a rover. He tries to get into everything because every not everyone is going to be solid on their uh, on their you know switches positioning which means Draymond's there to help. Draymond's there to like, you know, grind off the edges and make sure everything's okay. Uh, and if nobody's picking up for him, and if nobody's able to hold their own for him, problems arise. But uh, with performances we saw tonight from guys like Trace, Jonathan played that position pretty well. Uh, Moses was playing great on-ball defense, really helping out. Also made a couple weak side stops. Gary does his thing. I thought Clay played some solid defense like, when you play team defense the way the Warriors did for the majority of this game, good things happen. Good things do tend to happen. So, uh, you know, holding the Milwaukee Bucks to 90 points is uh, no easy feat. But even with Chris Middleton being out, it's no easy feat. So, yeah. Last but not least, Steph, Clay, Draymond, love the games from them. Um Clay obviously been coming off the bench. Talked about him plenty. Steph has sort of broken out, but been in a slump. Uh, was in a bit of a three, four game slump going onto this road trip. Kind of broke out of it a little bit. Still shooting inefficiently, but scoring more. Uh, obviously that Celtics game, I don't even want to count for anybody, so forget it. But um, he was kind of in a slump still. Came into this one, started off the game red hot, finished the game with 29 points. 10 of 18 from the field, 6 of 10 from 3, 3 of 4 from the free throw line. Only two turnovers. One of them, I think he missed, uh, like, lost the ball on a dribble trying to get back into the paint. Uh, Patrick Beverly stole it. So, not a big turnover night for Steph, which is good. He did have five assists as well. Eight rebounds also. Two were offensive. He had one that he got up over someone and, uh, and took it. That was pretty cool to see, you know. I don't see, uh, I don't see some other guards in this league doing that. You know, we're getting the paychecks there again. I digress. Steph had a great game. Good for him. And he only, play, only, only had, and he only had to play 31 minutes, which is nice. Didn't have to see this, you know, huge 35, 36, 37 night, uh, minute night for him. Um, and to do it against a team as good as Milwaukee, that's pretty big as well. Uh, Clay, four of seven from the field, two of five from three for 10 points. Also had four boards. You're going to say to yourself, Well, that doesn't seem too great. Why are you praising that? He did not take bad shots. This was the first game where aside from one jump shot, one jump shot, where they were already up like 20, so whatever. Every jump shot Clay Thompson took, every shot Clay Thompson took was a good shot. Not a bad shot. It was wide open or it was created from someone else. Wasn't forced. He was making the right passes. He was playing solid defense and was engaged on that end. He was getting on the glass. He was doing everything right and playing himself a solid game. And he was a plus 17 tonight in his minutes. Huge. 21 minutes. Big time performance. This is what I want to see from Clay Thompson. That's good. That's good. That's the kind of stuff I want to see. I don't care if you drop 35. That does, that's not changing to me. That's just I'm doing exactly what I was doing before, but I just don't start. Like, I need to see the actual, okay, I don't need a shoot to make an impact. I can actually just make the right play and still show up on the stat sheet, still feel good about myself, still contribute to wins. If I just play some solid defense and collect a couple stops, that's helping us win. If I can get on the glass a little bit, that's helping us win. He even dunked the ball tonight. Awesome. You know, that's how you know he's feeling energetic. So really happy for Clay. This was a great game for him. One of his best since moving to the bench and kind of, uh, I would say, starting a new chapter in his career. Uh, I really liked his performance tonight. Again, 
And it was nice because it was against a team as good as Milwaukee. So this wasn't some like, all right, you know, we're playing Portland, you know, is what it is. Who's really geared up for that, right? Um, but for the Bucks, again, hottest team in basketball since the All-Star break, been the number one defense in the league. And to come in and do that to them makes you feel pretty good about yourself. And last but not least within that is Draymond Green. Draymond, really tough task. Again, as I've said multiple times, running Draymond at center is a very risky move. It's risky. You're really, really pushing things, right? Uh, With Draymond coming off the bend or with Draymond starting at center, you're risking early fouls. You're risking a lot of defensive breakdowns. Especially with Jonathan Kaminga as your four, there's going to be inconsistencies there. So it's really risky to uh, to do. And you kind of paid the price a little bit early. Again, Draymond was already out with two fouls within the first six minutes of the game. Finished the game still. Only had to play 25 minutes, thankfully. And only finished the game with four fouls. But picked up too early in a playoff game that's really bad. Again, Giannis is an outlier in the sense that there just aren't many guys that match him physically, and he's an impossible cover for everyone. But when your guy is six foot five, it just amplifies that. And even though he collected some stops against Giannis, again, a few times they were able to get Giannis to t- uh, settle for jump shots. He missed a couple, made a couple, you live with it. Um, it's just a really tough matchup for him. And again, they're not limited to Giannis. They have Brook Lopez, who can get out at the three point line, who has solid touch around the rim, who can dunk the ball. They have Bobby Portis who can shoot the ball from all three levels and he's pretty physical. They've got a lot to deal with. You know, there's no easy matchup for a guy like Draymond against the Bucks. And I thought he played very well on that, uh, on that front. He was able to play within the physicality within the lines and not get too carried away. He did get a tech, um, but for the most part, I thought he handled himself well. There wasn't a, wasn't too much out of line shit. So really happy with his performance there. Uh, 12 points, six boards, six assists. He did have three turnovers. We know Draymond likes to try and sneak in those uh, really tight window passes, but uh, overall, I thought he played well there. Did have two blocks as well. He made two uh, fourth quarter, I think, maybe late third, fourth quarter threes. Um, Bob brought it up, which is very true. Uh, Made two threes in the second half, which ties uh, his total for the season, which was two heading into this game. So, uh, he's now made four second half threes. You know, obviously Draymond's been incredible shooting like 48% or something in the first quarter uh, shooting threes. So great to see him uh, start to put it, together, uh, put it together there when the legs are a bit tired. You know, that's been the big issue is like second half, Draymond's legs are a bit shot because he's playing so much defense. He's everywhere on that end, running up and down the floor. He always pushes the pace, you know. So big time, big time game from Draymond. The OG3 still putting together great performances. Overall, huge win. Warriors, again, win 125-90. to Big game against the Bucs. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow the Warriors play in a back-to-back against the Chicago Bulls, who just pulled out a pretty big win in Utah against the Jazz. So it is a back-to-back for both teams. However, Chicago's on the road, so you'd think the Warriors have the advantage. On top of the fact that, again, Steph, Draymond, Clay. All the uh, older guys didn't have to play too many minutes. So uh, hopefully the Warriors are well rested and ready to take them on. Um, That's going to be a solid game. The Bulls have not not been playing too bad of basketball. They had themselves a good stretch a month or so ago and have since cooled down a little bit. But they still have a solid squad. DeMar is playing well. Kobe White's obviously been good. Uh, That's going to be a tough matchup. But yeah, other than that. That's going to wrap things up. Podcast, uh, we got one more clip to upload from this week's episode with Dominic. So that'll come up soon, um, likely tomorrow. And then next week, early next week, Dominic and I will record again. And we'll get another another set out for you guys. So be prepared for that. And again, speaking of, his link will be down in the description as always. As will the playlist to the podcast. You can watch those clips, kind of see what we're doing over there. Talking about all things basketball, all things around the league. So, yeah. Uh, If you like the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Warriors fans, let me know how you're feeling in the description or in the comment section. Bucks fans, if you're here. Doc Rivers, am I right? (laughs) All right.
have a good rest of your uh good rest of your night good weekend and all that see you guys later peace